and we are live. It is Carcone Carne. I'm James Van Osel, joined tonight by Amy Kartheiser. And tonight we're talking about mental health. We're talking about suicide. Mental health is a topic I've made a point of coming back to frequently throughout the pandemic. It seems like now is the best possible time to be discussing this with some regularity. Amy created a charity called Through uh, Under the Same Sky, forgive me, Under the Same Sky. And she's helping to normalize this conversation, normalize the conversation about suicide and mental health. Amy, this is, for me, this is uncomfortable to, to talk about. It would have been much easier for me to have booked a band for tonight's show, but I realized <laughs> that's the problem. This is hard to talk about, but it needs to be talked about. Yeah, well then thanks for having me as your guest. Um, it, you know, it, it's all about making the uncomfortable comfortable with suicide and mental illness, I believe. So it's really important um, topic for me because I experienced it firsthand. My brother, Mark, died by suicide in 2014. And, you know, I think at the time, you know, if, if I had heard that someone had died by suicide, I probably wouldn't have known what to say to them. And I would have probably shied away from them. And you know what, that's exactly what happened to me. So um, people would kind of run. Um, people, you know, I'd be picking up my kids at school and people would look the other way. People who I would normally have conversations with on a day-to-day -day basis just did not know what to do. And so they did nothing. And so my goal with our charity under the same sky is to kind of bring the conversation out. Like I want, I want suicide and mental illness to be where we are with cancer now. You know, I look at when I was growing up in the seventies and eighties, cancer was always the C word and it was whispered and was. no one ever talked about it. And I literally in sixth grade had a friend whose mom died by cancer and she never knew her mom was sick. She never knew her mom was going to chemo appointments because no one talked about it. And I look at where we've come over these years and I honestly believe that if, you know, Mark would have died by cancer, you know, people would be more comfortable saying, oh my gosh, how long was he sick? What type of cancer did he have? Where did he receive help? You know, did he ever go into remission? Like there would have been so many questions, but because he died by suicide, you know, everyone just kind of backs off and doesn't say anything. So it's really important for me to bring the conversation out in the open um, I truly believe that that not only helps survivors, but I think by bringing the conversation out in the open, uh, you know, as a as common um, as any other type of illness can be, not just uh, mental illness, that we can help save lives by that too. So well, let's talk about what Under the Same Sky does as an organization. So um, it specifically raises. It, specifically raises money for people who are dealing um, with suicide to get them kind of that first conversation. So people who are dealing with suicide, where you, where you would normally lean on your friends, you know, if you've lost someone, a dear one to a heart attack or cancer or in a car accident or something, you'd be able to lean on your friends for that conversation. But suicide isn't like that. No one knows what to say. No one wants to say anything. People shy away from it. Um, so there's an amazing organization called the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And my family and I became highly engaged with them after my brother died. We did a lot of walks. They have them all around the United sure. States called Out of the Darkness Walks. And they were wonderful for us um, because we got to surround ourselves with people who've been through exactly what we have. You know, and the conversation with these thousands of people is very open there and people get it. Um, but that first conversation you have, I think is like a real deal breaker, um, in, in getting yourself out there and being able to talk to more people about it. So we raise money, um, for a specific area of American foundation for suicide prevention called healing conversations and healing conversations allows other people who are survivors of suicide, um, as volunteers to talk to these people who make the phone call when they've lost a loved one. So, so the, you're building a network of- Yeah, we're, yeah, exactly. We're, so truth be told, and they know this too, I, I didn't even know they had this healing conversations until I came to them and said, hey, listen, this is what I'd like to do. And they're like, wow, we actually have a program where we do this. 
So I want to help raise funds so we can make this program bigger. So people are aware of it so that we can get it all around the United States. You know, in a time where it's not COVID, a lot of these people would meet one-on-one, -on -one, but you probably need to be in a bigger city to have that volunteer. But if you're, you know, somewhere in, in rural America and you don't have a survivor network close to you, you know, now during COVID, it's really great because we've got this opportunity with Zoom and um, to be able to connect with people. But after this is over, we're hoping to keep building the network so everyone has an opportunity to speak with someone. And, and for me, it's not just one conversation because this healing is never over, you know? So when you're six months in, a year in, four months in, you're gonna feel different, but you still may wanna have those conversations with someone. So this will allow you to do that. Yeah, what interested me, one of the things that interested me when I, I read about this in, in the paper, you always hear about suicide prevention charities and initiatives. I, I don't, being detached from this, I don't often think about the impact on survivors, or I don't hear about initiatives like this. And it is brutal yeah. for friends and family members who live through this. And I think this is such an important thing because this is something you'll be caring for the rest of your life. Yeah, 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 for sure. And, and suicides, you know, I've experienced death with loved ones through a different type of death. But suicide, man, it rocks your world. It um, leaves you riddled with guilt. Everyone, you're constantly rewinding conversations from three years ago, two days ago, a week ago, six months ago, and you're replaying them in your head. And then you're putting together stories and um, to see if you can figure out why or what did you miss that you weren't able to help this person. And I feel like it's always a puzzle where you're never going to get all the pieces to put together. Um, so many woulda, coulda, shouldas, you know, that you're not necessarily going to have with another type of death. So it's really hard. I mean, really hard to get through for sure. So, I mean, there's the grief, there's what you just described that kind of self-analysis of trying to figure out what what could I have done is anger part of this cycle as well wrestling you know, through it what what I learned through this with my family I've got um five siblings my parents is that we all grieve differently so is some people had anger you know my brother was an identical twin so his you know the Matt my other brother it's interesting he had a lot of anger um and, and it was more so why didn't he come to me why didn't he tell me? We've we've been this pair our whole lives. How could this have happened? So, you know, and I never got angry. I was just more sad and devastated. But, you know, I had aunts and uncles who were angry at him, you know? So, you know, everyone really grieved differently about it and found different emotions through the grieving process. So yeah, anger anger is definitely gonna be part of it for some people, for sure. And this again is the benefit of something like Under the Same Sky talking to people who understand yeah. those exact emotions you're going through. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And like I said, all the people you're talking to are people who are survivors of suicide. So they've experienced what that aftermath is like and can hopefully get you through on the other side of this grief in a healthy manner. You didn't start the charity right away no. after your brother died. You, there was some, you got some time Yeah. afterward. So yeah. Um, so the way this charity started is kind of interesting, at least for me. Um, you know, we, like I said, we've been doing walks with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And I'm an interior designer by trade. So that's what I do. And hey, I, this, this is where I interrupt you for people okay. watching, watching on whether it's Facebook or YouTube, they're probably thinking, yeah, no kidding. We're, lo we're looking at <laughs> this perfectly beautiful, elegant home behind. Oh my you. gosh, you're so nice. Uh, no. Okay. So thank you. Uh -huh. um, so that's what I do. And so I found myself on a plane ride, a girlfriend who lived in Southern France, and we were going to go shopping in these brocants and markets. And I had just gotten a new studio and I thought literally on the plane, like that would be amazing if I brought back all these things from France. And what if I started to set it up in my studio and I did like a pop-up shop and people would come and buy things and I'd raise money for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. So that's how it started, was on that plane ride. You know, all of a sudden I found this gorgeous armoire I, I needed to have, but you've got an armoire 
So now you've got a big container and now you're shipping that container, um, whether it's full or not, no matter, you know, you're paying the same amount of money. So you might as well just stuff it with everything you can. So we would run around these markets. I'd be carrying tables on my head and dumping it off in the truck and we'd get chairs and blankets and captains, you know, and all these things we could find. And then I shipped it home and, um, then I took my family to Morocco and we did, you know, and all of a sudden I became like on this mission to travel and find things and bring them back. And I sent out invitations, wasn't sure if anyone was going to show, but we do, um, I did like a first look event for the first night, the pop-up shop was open and I charged a minimal fee for people to come. And we sold out in like two weeks, the tickets for everyone to come and people came and we sold out of everything that I had purchased from France and Morocco. So I went back and just started, I went to India, I went to Myanmar, I went to Bhutan. I was like, became crazy with travel and like trying to get new stuff for everyone. So they keep coming back and it wasn't the same old stuff. So that's, you know, that pop-up shop is what got me going on trying to raise more money. And then the summer that Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain died um, was really devastating. It was the same week anniversary that my brother had died. And I remember getting a phone call from my girlfriend and she was like, okay, I love what you're doing with these pop-up shops, but this is big. We've got to do more. Like the suicide rate is unbelievable. You know, 35% increase since 1999. So that's where, you know, we started brainstorming and coming up with ideas. And when it came down to it, I really, as we started to think about it over the years, what was happening to me was that every time someone lost someone to suicide, I'd get a phone call or a text or someone on social media would reach out like, hey, do you mind if I had this person call you? Hey, do you mind if his sister calls you? You know, she just lost her nephew. She just lost her dad. And so I was becoming this person and I loved it that people felt that they could reach out to so that they could have this conversation because you need it. Mm -hmm. But then that's where we came up with the idea of helping support. So this could be on a nationwide basis that we could support those people who need that first conversation. So we still continue to do these pop-up shops. We um, actually love to do them in person, but we did our first COVID one in November. And, you know, we did a live event and we have a pop-up shop. We actually have the shop still open on our charity website. And so everything that people buy, 100% of the proceeds go to the charity. Oh. And then we also try and raise funds for the charity too. So cool. So as we're recording this interview, we're um, putting it live on Facebook. Tristan Engel says, time to end the stigma. Thank you for what you're doing. Oh, That's thank nice you to so see. much. Yeah, I'm pleased to do the work. So we were in this awful, isolating situation right now. No secret. It's, it's such a tough time. I find myself especially concerned for children, what they're going through, with what that's going to look like from a mental health perspective years down the road. What can you, as a survivor, as someone who's talked to so many people, what can you say? What, what kind of, I don't know if advice is the right word, but what, what can you offer to people who are struggling right now? Yeah, well, I think it's, um, first of all, I think people need connection, you know, so that's what makes this pandemic so difficult. And like you said, these people are isolated. And I, I love what you said at the beginning that you you're doing this at night to kind of keep busy and do something healthy for yourself, you know, mentally healthy and everything that you do your podcast. But if people could find just one thing to focus on a day, just one thing, it doesn't have to be big. It could be go for a walk around the block. You know, I think if they can find one thing that's good for themselves mentally and sometimes working in the physicality of it all, I think is a wonderful thing too. Um, I also think other people, if they notice people are struggling, like don't be afraid to have the hard conversations. I think that's really important to be able to ask people, you know, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Are you depressed? Are you thinking about suicide? Bringing up the topic of suicide doesn't make people want to act on it anymore. It actually kind of deters them from it. And it actually helps them a little bit in thinking through, you know, that they don't want to do it just by opening up the conversation. And I think it's um, 
that person needs to just be very present in the conversation. The person who's opening up the conversation just needs to be very present and listen and maybe not try to fix everything for this person, but just to be there. So, um, you know, I'm a walker and talker, you know, since my brother died, I put on my headphones and I go walk down to Lake Michigan and I actually talk out loud to him. Um, so that's kind of my healing, but I think that's, you know, even, even if you're not a suicide survivor, I still think it's healthy, you know, put on your music or just go down by the lake and just, you know, I think being outside in nature, it's hard when it's 20 or 30 below, but you know, with COVID, we at least we've got our masks on. It helps. I've been wearing balaclavas now when I go out, like just because it's so cold. I put on snow pants, but I think getting outside is just such an important part of this. I completely agree. And I, I did just that. I got to a point. I don't know if I was depressed necessarily. I, I, I know I wasn't feeling awesome. Yeah. Uh, like last summer, I'm like, I'm going to start going for walks. And I went for walks every day. And exactly what you said, just getting out throwing my headphones on and just being outside and moving and just having that. Yes, I was alone, but I felt very yeah. in touch with everything. So yeah, it makes you feel a little bit more real because you do, mm -hmm. you're passing people all the time who are doing the same thing, especially on the lakefront. And, you know, when the pandemic first started, I mean, every day I'd make my kids get outside, like go for a walk. You can do, I'd love it if you did it with me or we do it with the dog, but if you just need to go by yourself, like that was a goal every day for all of us. And it's interesting, you know, I've got teenagers. So um, I've got a 15 year old and 13 year old. And as my little sister would tell me, like we're hyper aware of any type of, you know, are you depressed or, you know, I mean, I'm like hyper aware of my kids and we have, since my brother died, we have always had the conversation about mental illness and they have known about suicide. And I think it's really important to start that conversation as early as you can. Um, but my daughter in particular is really vivacious. She needs people. She wants to play every sport. She She's the kid who cries on Martin Luther King Jr. Day because they don't have school. You know, like she wants to be out there with her classmates and her friends. And man, did this change her. The first seven, eight months, crying all the time, um, didn't want to leave her room. I mean, it was devastating and devastating for me um, because, you know, as much as I'd always talk about talking about it, like I almost couldn't get through to her. And it really made me realize how difficult sometimes the, sure. as much as we want to have the conversation, maybe people aren't always receptive to the conversation. So, you, you know, if you can stay on people, you know, stay, just keep up with them how are you doing today? Is there anything I can do for you today? Can, I'd love to be here for you if you just want to talk. I think that can help them get out of their heads. I think a lot of it, you know, we get in our own heads and um, we create these stories about what our day is or our life is about. So, um, but that was a really big firsthand experience for me. Isn't it interesting? We, we talked about your business, Amy Carthizer Design. That's defined you for however many years. This new track you're on is also every bit as much a defining thing for who you are yeah. in the present day. This is kind of taking you in a direction you probably never could have imagined. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's become this really important mission. I think it's really cool what you're doing. Oh, thank you so much. I, I'd say it's the biggest thing I've ever done and I'm really proud of it. You know, I think my goal when I started, even just started the walks, raising money um, for American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, and my goal has always been, I never want any family to experience the pain that we did um, because it's gut-wrenching. And, and that is my goal. If you can save one life by being out there, by being authentic, by being real and having the conversation, I think that makes everything worth it. And again, it is just having those conversations. It's normalizing it. Yeah. Just having this 15 minute chat tonight, it's just getting it in front of people and maybe they're not going to listen to the whole thing. Maybe they caught bits and pieces, but just, it just keeps those seeds planted so that it, yeah. it's something to keep growing and developing over time. It's such important stuff. I, I really appreciate what you're doing. And from this horrible tragedy, so many of us can't even fathom, uh, you've built something really inspirational and wonderful. So keep up the fantastic work. Thank you so much. I will. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, it gave me strength. I never knew I had, you know, so I'm, I'm happy to use it in a positive way.